The south of Spain, historic, bucolic, a great place to take it easy. But not for me. I'm here doing what I can for international scientific cooperation. You know, Aurelia Perez has never met Kevin Rossman in Australia, but the two should really get together and talk. Why? Well, it has to do with a whole lot of lead, a little bit of ice in Greenland, and what the ancient Romans were getting up to in Spain. The story begins in Greenland, a landscape that hasn't changed very much for 400,000 years. It might look pristine, but hidden in the ice is a record of how we have polluted the Earth's atmosphere. Over thousands of years, pollutants like lead have mixed with water in the upper atmosphere and fallen as snow in Greenland. And each year, the snow turns to ice, trapping the pollutants deep inside. On the surface, we've really got yesterday's snow and then we pro progressively go down, uh, back in time as we go down into the snow. The snow is layered, is, is deposited in layers, uh, a bit like uh, the, the tree rings in a tree, where as you go into a tree, you look back into the history of the tree, so the same thing happens with, uh, with the ice. In 1989, American and European scientists began recovering this frozen record. They drilled three kilometers down into the Greenland ice through a hundred thousand years of history. Sections of the ice were then sent to scientists around the world for more detailed analysis. One of those was Kevin Rossman, a physicist in Perth. In a clean room at Curtin University, Rossman has been analyzing the samples the melted ice is a precious record of the past. Nothing is allowed to contaminate it. Working with French scientists, he has been studying lead levels in the ancient ice. There was hardly any lead in the air back when the Egyptians were building the pyramids, and a whole lot of lead once the Industrial Revolution came along. No surprises. So, what is all this then? It turns out that two and a half thousand years ago, there was a huge surge in lead levels that lasted 900 years. We measured the lead isotopes, and that enables you to uh, fingerprint the lead and see whether it's any different from the lead in the past. And we found that it was very different and that it indicated that, um, that the lead was anthropogenic or man-made. So that tells you that it wasn't any natural process that created it, there was actually mining going on. It had to. The only way that that lead uh, could be accounted for was from, from mines. So Kevin Rossman set out to discover exactly where this sudden surge of lead came from. He carefully evaporated the ice water by zapping it with electricity, leaving only minuscule particles of the lead dust. The dust was placed in a mass spectrometer, which separates out the particles into groups that can be identified and measured. Every ore body of lead in the world has a unique fingerprint. When Rossman looked at the ancient lead, nearly all of it pointed to one place, southern Spain, especially Rio Tinto. The Rio Tinto region south of Seville has been mined for millennia, from prehistoric times right up to the Industrial Revolution. Even after thousands of years of mining, the river still runs red with minerals. Which is where Aurelio Perez comes in. He's an archaeologist at the nearby University of Huelva who has been documenting the ancient history of the mines. It was during Roman occupation when most of the mining was done. Este aquí es un antiguo sitio romano. Sí, aquí lo que se ven es la, la sucesión primero de un escorial que ocupa la, la parte baja de, de la ladera de este pequeño cerro y por encima de él un segundo nivel de, de habitaciones, ¿eh? de casas romanas que hoy están destruidas por, un, por la ladera. ¿eh? Habitación para los mineros. Sí, esto es un pequeño poblado minero de los muchos que había en la zona de Rio Tinto. Aurelio Perez has developed an intimate knowledge of the mining past of southern Spain, particularly Rio Tinto, where more than 165,000 kilos of silver were extracted under the Romans. Mm -hmm. 
de mayor tonelaje de que se ha encontrado en el Mediterráneo, un tonelaje de escoria corresponde a Río Tinto. Es eh, un mayor récord del mundo antiguo de producción de sí, metales. Es uno de los mayores, ¿eh? no diría el mayor por no ser chauvinista, pero es uno de los mayores de productores de, que, de metales en el mundo antiguo. Just what were the Romans doing in southern Spain that gave the world such a severe dose of lead pollution? Well, they were making money, coins that is, and lots of them. Enough silver coins to run a large and growing empire. So, how does the lead come into it? Well, this is because the, the ore that's mined contains mainly lead, and there's only a very small proportion of silver. So in the smelting process, what they have to do is, um, to get rid of the lead, of course, is to produce a, a molten liquid and then evaporate off or oxidise off the lead. And it leaves behind a small droplet of uh, metal which is concentrated in silver. And then if they want to use the lead, then they reduce the lead back to, into ingots. But that's the way they concentrate the silver. Archaeologists now have a new tool they can use when trying to understand the past. But digging is still important. It's where archaeologists get most of their answers. In this case, though, it took ice from Greenland and a scientist from Australia to reveal something very new. We're not the only ones to pollute the atmosphere. It seems the Romans beat us to that one, too.